So after like the umpteenth comment about this product or rather iPad accessory, I knew I had to pick one up to check it out and just to share with you guys. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the Logitech Crayon and it is a budget alternative, probably the best alternative to the Apple Pencil currently. And yeah, I'm gonna get into my impressions with it, kind of compare it to the Apple Pencil first gen and the second generation that I have here. But before we continue, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like in this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. I listen to you, by the way. I listen to you guys, that's why I bought this product to begin with. Uh, any interaction is greatly appreciated as the algorithm likes that and will push my content to more people. So without further ado, let's get into testing the Logitech Crayon here and see if it's a great, cheap Apple Pencil alternative after all. So as you can see here, I have the first gen Apple Pencil with the Mini 5 that I have here. It's also compatible with the previous gen iPad Pros, the Air 3, and the current iPad 2018, or the 9.7 inch one. I also have the second generation Apple Pencil here that attaches to the side of the newer uh, iPad Pro from 2018, and it's only compatible with these newer models. This goes for around $100. I got this open box for $89, whereas the Apple Pencil second gen, although it's exclusive with the iPad Pro here, it does have an increased cost at $129. You can probably get it for cheaper too, but still, pricey stylus is here. This is where the Logitech Crayon comes in. It's not quite as sophisticated. It doesn't pair the same way. It doesn't have pressure sensitivity, but what it does have is a fine point of input, which allows you to have a better experience writing or drawing or doing whatever you do. And yeah, I mean, I did make a video kind of going over why you need an Apple Pencil, why I think people should buy it if they have an iPad or an iPad Pro. But this is, like I said, probably the next best alternative. And let's kind of get into why here. So I have, you know, played around with this for a minute, but I haven't actually gone and done a lot of in-depth testing. I kind of wanted to save that for this video, you know, kind of just share my real honest thoughts coming from, you know, the best of the best with the iPad input here with Apple Pencil. If the company makes the device and the accessory, chances are it's going to be the best in all case scenario. But with this, uh, for what I found, it's darn near close, but there are some differences. So one of the main differences between these uh, devices and the Logitech Crayon is that you don't need to pair uh, with Bluetooth. It just turns on, you charge it via lightning, so you do have to charge it. It does offer around like seven hours of writing time, so it's not horrible. I think the battery life is gonna be better with the Apple Pencil here, especially with the second gen, as it's like always charging, it's always attached to your Pro if you have it. And since you don't have to pair this device via Bluetooth, it just has a battery and some kind of electric thing that it does, you know, with the tip, um, you can use it with two iPads at once, and I will say supported iPads. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the previous generation iPads. I'm like almost positive because if it did, it would work with my iPhone. There's something that Apple has done with the newer generation iPads, something with a display, I think, that makes you know devices like this only compatible with it. So on the box, it says it's officially supporting the 2018 iPad, a newer iPad Pros, newer iPads and iPad Pros, and unfortunately not the Air 2 or the iPad 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong though. But yeah, right off the bat, you get a really fine point of input. We can go into the notes app here of both of these devices and just kind of, you know, test out the smoothness factor here. So I'm gonna make a new note and let's uh, go to the pen. And once again, like I said, you do not get any pressure sensitivity. So if I go into like the pencil here, um, you're not gonna get any variation in terms of like the, you know, like hardness or whatever. You can make it, you know, obviously you can color it in more to make it darker, but it's a pretty much set uh, whatever it is, thickness or harshness. But yeah, let me just erase here. Obviously, you do not have like a double tap like you get uh, to toggle the eraser with the Apple Pencil 2 here. Um, so I'm going to erase all of this. And let's kind of test out the pen because if you're buying this, chances are you're not going to be an artist. You're someone who just needs a fine point of input to do some writing with. So I'm going to, you know, use the pen once again here. Let's pull both of these up. So let's do a little test at 120 hertz with the Pro here and 60 hertz with the Mini. So we'll do hello. And that's really great, actually. It doesn't feel too far off from a pencil. And it has, like once again, this fine point of input, which allows you to write really comfortably. Um, let's do it with the uh, Mini here. Same thing, obviously not quite as buttery smooth as the Pro here, but once again, it's a fine point of input and it will allow you to write in a more neat and you know not like a sloppy way like you would with one of those fatter styluses or your finger. One thing I do have to say about the Crayon here is that it's not as comfortable as an Apple Pencil. And that makes sense that it's a flatter three-dimensional, you know, like cylinder design, whereas the Apple Pencils first and second generation, regardless of their build materials, this is more of a matte plastic, this is more of a glossy plastic, it's more comfortable to hold as it's more circular. So you are paying a little more extra for the ergonomics here but in terms of just the overall functionality with like writing with a fine point 
both are the same, I would say. But yeah, the whole like riding experience, you know, not taking into account any, you know, situations where you need pressure sensitivity, both of these devices offer a pretty identical, you know, experience here. Let's go into an app like, I don't know, Good Notes or Notability. So going into an actual app where you use devices like this, let me just kind of give you my opinion, you know, just like annotating and writing. So I can circle that and say, you know, this is an important uh, bit. I know my handwriting is horrible, but this is how I write. This is how I take it. It's very messy cursive, and I had absolutely no problem there. The latency was perfect. Uh, There's nothing I can say against it. It's just a perfect experience, you know, just like great. Once again, for note taking purposes, we can do the same thing with the Apple Pencil. No problem. Same experience, you know, this is important the only difference really is the ergonomics i like the way this feels better even the second gen although it does have a flat side like i said a little bit more ergonomic but once again i will repeat this the note taking experience with both devices here identical if you're going to just do that and you don't want to spend the extra money on the ergonomics or like the seamlessness of having your pencil attached to your ipad the crayon should work perfectly and i'm actually impressed with it i will say it doesn't look as good it's not as ergonomic you know i'm not a huge fan of this orange plastic but it doesn't look half bad you do have some nice aluminum and yeah it's cheaper and it does the same thing for less the same thing can be said about you know instances where you want a fine point of interaction say you're in an app like you know luma fusion you're doing editing you don't feel like using your fat fingers to you know manipulate a bunch of things on your timeline or you're in lightroom and you just want to you know make some adjustments without using your fat fingers or you're you know doing local adjustments and whatever both of these devices work perfectly for that so once again i'll repeat here if you're someone who just wants a finer point of input with the ipad pro whether it's note taking or just general interaction here with like you know creative apps and you know the web so you don't want to use your fingers say you were missing a cursor you want once again a fine point of input you can use the apple pencil or the logitech crayon and it will work the same way you can also highlight text i haven't tried that yet with the crayon but we'll see here and as you can see here it's just as convenient with this device in comparison to the apple pencil so yeah i will repeat for the final time here if you are doing you know note taking or you just want a once again fine point of input with your iPad, whether it's the Pro, non-Pro, anything that's supported. If you don't want to spend the extra money and you're not overly concerned with looks and ergonomics, the Crayon is going to be perfect for you and you can pick it up and it's going to be great. It's going to serve every purpose that you want it to. But if you are an artist and if you want the pressure sensitivity that you get with the tip of the Apple Pencil here, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you the difference between these two devices in that regard. So this is the main difference between these two devices. One offers levels of pressure sensitivity, the other one doesn't. So if you, you know, shade with the pencil in this app, you see how it's all uniform. If you want to make it darker, you just, you know, color more. With this device, if you want it to be light, you can have it light. If you want it to be dark, you can have it dark. You know, that is the beauty of the Apple Pencil. That's why it's more expensive. It's higher tech. So you get pressure sensitivity here with it. And if you are an artist and you want that, you know, realism that you get with, you know, a pencil or a pen, whether you're using Procreate, whether you're using Autodesk Sketchbook or whatever you're using, then this is going to be the best device for you. And spending that extra money is just going to be justified. It's going to be a night and day difference. So if you're an artist, 100% buy the Apple Pencil. But if you're not, if you're going to do simple doodles and drawing and you're just going to be taking notes, like I said, then the Logitech Crayon, again, if you're not overly concerned with ergonomics and looks and this pressure sensitivity, which is, you know, important to some people, then this is the device for you for sure. And yeah, that about wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. I do listen to you guys. I do read almost all of your comments, and I want to push content that you guys want to see. So if you have any iPad-related content you want me to make or non-iPad-related content you want me to make, I'm trying to find certain smartphones and other devices to buy. If you want to see anything, just let me know. You know, like, like other people's comments if you see something that they wrote that you want to see. I don't know. Just like suggest content here. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.